on this edition of Around BCC. As we head into the final weeks of the academic year, we focus on the stories of successful BCC students. BCC's massage therapy program returns to the Boston Marathon one year after last year's bombing. And BCC's diversity is on full display at the annual International Festival. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. We are in the month of May, the final month of the 2013-2014 academic year here at Bristol Community College. Finals will be here for the students at BCC throughout all of its campuses. And uh, it's unbelievable that another academic year is, is just about to come to a close. What we like to do for uh, a part of today's uh, program is to actually talk to a couple of students. Uh, there are plenty of stories around Bristol Community College of students who have made a name for themselves, who have uh, stood out not only academically, but also uh, in other various aspects of their life here at BCC. And we're going to talk to two of them today. Joining me on our set here is uh, Ann Brum and uh, Jason Sadie. Uh, thank you Hello. both for joining us today. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. And let me start with you ladies first. Um, how did you get to BCC? How did you uh, come back to BCC? I know you have a story about you were here and came back. Talk about that. Well, you know, I started my college education 30 years ago, and because of finances and family, sure. I didn't complete it. I always wanted to come back. So I initially came back to BCC and had the idea that I'd take a course or two that would help me in my employment. And um, I liked it so much. I got involved in more and more things, and here I am four years later, and I'm graduating with a nursing degree. What, were you a nursing student at the beginning as no, well? No, I or? wasn't. I came back in um, medical coding, and then I went on to health information, and I was encouraged by my professors to tr apply to the nursing program. They saw something in me, and they encouraged me to do it, and um, here I am today. What do you like about nursing? I like the, um, that you can give back to the community. Um, there's a lot of aspects of nursing that involve helping people, and that's what I like to do. I've done a lot of civic engagement here at the college, right. and I'd like to do that in my career. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was attracted to nursing. So let me ask you, uh, what was it like after 30 years coming back to school? Uh, scary, initially, you know, um, but there's a lot of resources here. Yeah. Um, people encourage you, um, professors, staff, if you have a problem, you know, we have the writing center, the computer center, um, I have used tutors, um, and then I got involved in the honors program, and the students network a lot, and we all help each other, right. and it just, um, it empowers you to be a better student. Mm. I do want to get into both of you and, and your, your roles at BCC outside of the classroom, but I want to talk to Jason about his, his uh, educational experience here. Now, Jason, you're from Dartmouth, went to Dartmouth High. Yep. Uh, what brought you to BCC? Um, well, I, at first it was, uh, it was a scary thought. I was in my senior year and we were supposed to write our senior papers and apply to schools and I just didn't want to do it, um, to be honest. Uh, I, I, the, the thought of finance scared me. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at some schools, they were priced 20 to 40 grand. And um, I, I saw BCC as a cheap alternative to get some credits um, while I was here and then transfer off. And you know, I just kind of enjoyed my time here at the school. And I, I, I initially thought I was only going to stay here for, for a year or even two years, but I, I stayed for an extra year just because I enjoyed what I was doing and what I was mm -hmm. learning at BCC. So, um, you know, it's kind of unexpected. Mm -hmm. what, what is your major? Uh, it's liberal arts, math, and science concentration. Okay, and you'll be graduating at and the end of May as well, right? Yeah. Let me, let me ask you, Jason, um, what, you know, not knowing what you wanted to do, BCC, you know, we talk about this all the time, how it's a great place to start, get a lot of your core education out of the way, and then you can focus on uh, a, a major, maybe in a, in a, bla uh, in a baccalaureate school. What do, you, what do you hope to do? If Anne's going to get into nursing, what do you hope to, to, to do? Well, uh, it's kind of a tough question. Uh, I had I had my mind set on something, but um, I wanted to go into integral medicine, which is okay. a new field of medicine. But um, I'm going to take a year off for technical training. Um, Great. 
mostly just because I want to. I, I really want to make sure that's something I want to do before I, I decide to commit my time and, and energy and in, into this, you know, this new path. Um, so I re really just want to take some time off and really decide and make sure that's what I, you know, deep down that's inside what I want to do because a lot of times instead of us choosing our fate, we you know we let our fate choose us and we just enjoy the way it feels. So. You know, we follow that path. Yeah. So. And, and he's still young. He, he can. He's got a little yeah. bit of time. Yeah. Just he's going to be just good. Just don't wait 20 years from that <laughs> like I did. That's all. The, the, one of the main reasons why I wanted both of you to, to, to join us today is not only talk about your academic successes, but also the successes of what you've been able to do here at VCC uh, outside the classroom. You're both members of the Student Senate. Jason, you're the president of, of the Senate. Let me start with you, Jason. What made you get involved with, with the Senate? Ooh. Do you like politics? Is that part of it? <laughs> I thought I liked politics. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems so long ago that I really don't remember. Um, I, my brother was a part of the Student Senate. Uh, he was an interim member, and um, he just said that it was, it was great networking. I remember uh, he went to a conference in, I think, Boston? Mm. It, I was, it, was, it was Boston? Yeah. yeah. They went on a conference to Boston. It was a lot of... Um, you know, just student leadership conference yeah. where they talk about, you know, being successful and, and motivation. And that was something I needed in my first year. So I decided to go for the Senate because I wanted as well the same experience. So I joined the Senate and I never thought I was going to get as wrapped up in it as I did. And, you know, next thing I know, I wanted to be the president. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. And it, it just kind of just sprung on me. Mm -hmm. It was very uh, quick snowball effect. Now, Ann, you're the New Bedford representative, yes. New Bedford campus representative to the Senate. How did you get involved? Um, I was working on a project um, with Phi Theta Kappa and two of the other members that I was working with on that leadership project were on the Senate and they needed interim members so they asked me and I said yeah I'll give that a try and three years later I'm still on the Senate so um, it does have a way of um, drawing you in nice. you know it, it's fun and it's um, you do a lot of good work, mm -hmm. and it's very rewarding at the end of the day, so it's hard to say no. Right. Uh, either one of you can answer this next question. You know, the, the Senate is the governmental arm, if you will, liaison to the student population. Um, how, how easy and how important was it for you to interact more with students to find out what their needs are uh, on this campus and, and, and getting those needs met from, you know, administration and faculty and staff here? Um, yeah. The networking is what makes it fun. I mean, yes, we do um, forward issues that are for the student body, and, and it's good that we do those things, but more than that is the people you meet and the lives that you interact with. Mm. Um, you get to um, work with so many very motivated, and for me at least, I draw energy from it. Right, right. Jason? What about you? Um, it was it was tough at first. Uh, when I was new, I didn't really know how exactly what I was doing. But um, as you go on, you kind of just gain a, a knack for it and a little bit of experience with it. And you know, when there's an important topic, it, you got to get your perspective out of there, and you got to really mm -hmm. just talk to the students and see, hey, what do you feel about this, or you know, how can I represent you in this case? And mm -hmm. and a lot of the times, it's speaking to your classmates, uh, standing up in the beginning of or, or the ending of class, and, and just quickly bringing up a conversation about it. And um, administration really re reacts well when students, you know, come forth in a professional manner and say, "This is what we want, and this is why we'd want it," and the students support it. Yeah. Even though both of you um, haven't uh, had extensive experience at other colleges and universities, do you feel that the intimacy of BCC helps in, in having that student relationship with administration, with faculty and staff? The class sizes are, are smaller here. I mean, you've all heard, I'm, I'm sure, of, mm -hmm. of the cases of in universities. There's hundreds of students in, in one class, in one lecture hall. So do you feel that the intimacy helps that relationship between students? and and faculty and staff? Definitely is what kept me here. Um, I've taken university courses before. I actually transferred to BCC from a local university. Um, there's not that encouragement or intimacy. I wouldn't be here right now doing this interview if it wasn't for right. faculty that have spent time to encourage me. 
or staff that have bent over backwards to help you get enrolled in that class that you need or, or whatever it is all the way down the line, everyone here contributes to your success. Right. When you're at a university, they want to know your number and get in line. And you know, it, it's not the same encouragement at all. One of the, um, one of the other aspects about both of you is uh, not only do you give your time to the Senate, but you give your time to a lot of community service projects. And BCC mm -hmm. is making a concerted effort, we've covered it before on the show, on getting students involved in their community, having them help out in some ways with making their community a, a better place to live. And I know, Anne, you're uh, one of the winners of the uh, Newman uh, Civic Fellows Award this year, which is a national award which recognizes community service by students. First of all, congratulations on thank that. Thank you, thank you. And, it was and, an uh, unexpected honor. Let me just ask you, what, what were some of the, some of the commun uh, community and civic engagement <sighs> events you've worked on? Well, I've worked here at BCC on a number of projects um, through the Senate and even outside the Senate. Um, the Giving Tree is always one of my favorite. Which is the holiday. Which is the holiday right. where we supply, um, you know, student um, children with um, gifts for Christmas, and that's always very rewarding. I've been involved with the Cinderella Project, collecting um, prom gowns and professional attire for job interviews mm -hmm. for students that are in need of that. Um, in my local community, I'm on the Community Preservation Board, okay. which we meet at least monthly, and we have a um, actually a fairly large budget to do good works in the community. Um, service learning, I've done a number of projects. This semester I'm doing one at the Westport Senior Center mm -hmm. involving nutrition and the elderly. Um, so I've done pretty much one of those almost every semester here. Mm. And, and I enjoy getting out in the community too. And we get very good feedback from the attendees and the community members who appreciate, um, in our case, a group of BCC nursing students who are doing this project. Right. Jason, what about some of the events that you've worked on and some of the initiatives you've worked on outside of classroom? Um, and before I mention that, I just want to make note that uh, uh, back to the question you had previously, sure. I went to a leadership conference and I was meeting with other schools, other student presidents and student trustees, and I made a comment that uh, our, our president, President Sprague, attends many Senate meetings almost yes, weekly, biweekly, yeah. and they made a comment that it usually takes them at least a year before they even meet their president. and. I just, I just thought it was shocking that, you know, we get that intimacy where we get to meet our president, not only meet with him, but, you know, talk to him and get to know him um, through our meetings. Mm. And he's always willing to hear student concerns. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But to my civic engagement, um, I was a, a student ambassador, a peer mentor. I was the student representative on the Campus Preparedness Committee. Um, those were just various roles, but I've as well worked on the BCC Book Exchange Right. was a program where we took donated books um, and we recycled them into the into the um, forthcoming year to students who couldn't afford books, uh, the, the brand new books. So um, we supplied hundreds of students with books. Um, Giving Tree as well, I worked on that with Ann. And um, uh, Advocacy Day, I'm part of a statewide group right. which is um, the student, uh, student government presidents and uh, student trustees. We meet together monthly, and I'm a, the chairman of that group at Student Advisory Council. Mm. Well, both of you have had uh, very successful careers here at BCC. Um, there are many others in, in your boat that have done a lot of great work here at, here at Bristol Community College. I know, Anne, you're going to UMass, uh, UMass Dartmouth mm -hmm. uh, beginning next year to get your bachelor's degree yes. in nursing. We wish you all the best on, on that. Thank you. Jason, we know you'll find your way. You've got a good head, head on your shoulders. You've done a lot here at BCC. Thank Both you. of you have. And I appreciate your time for joining us. And, and uh, congratulations on commencement this year. And, uh, and have a great summer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Katrina Benner, I'm in the Fine Arts Transfer Program here at BCC. Um, I got involved in the art program because all my life I've been drawing and painting and 
I recently got my GED and wanted to follow my dreams of becoming an artist and really not wasting the talents that I have. Um, I have two pieces here. One is uh, the Torso of David, which is a charcoal drawing that I did in Drawing One. And I also have a, a 3D wire self-portrait. So it is a paper sculpture. We started making um, it using paper towels. And once that was all finished, we ended up using paper. Um, some of us use Bristol, some construction. Um, I just use actually printer paper to make mine. Um, this one is called One Person's Trash, and it's pretty much just about a person, how they can be like isolated and abandoned, but then someone can come along and help them. Welcome back. We all remember the events of April 15, 2013, when two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. BCC had a presence at the race as members of the massage therapy program were on hand to lend support to the race's medical staff. Everyone from BCC was, thankfully, uninjured. We spoke with some of those who were in Boston to share their story from a year ago and look ahead to their return this year. The massage therapy program at Bristol Community College has volunteered at the Boston Marathon for the past seven years since I've actually been with the college. So at the Boston Marathon I've heard awesome things that it was a really awesome experience that only certain people get to experience so I was excited but just nervous of everything that I was going to have to do but it was, um, I've heard that it was like gonna be a bunch of massage therapists, a bunch of um, different modalities and everything going on there and it was a really great experience from when I got there. Like then I calmed down because I saw that there were other schools there. Um, we got to meet people from all over the world. Um, it was really cool. When you're in the John Hancock building, in the medical area that we're in, we're completely cut off. There are lots of marathon officials with headphones on that are getting information, but we don't necessarily hear that information. There's quite a system of getting runners into this medical tent and how they get triaged and treated. Everything seemed to be going fine. At the time that we things started getting a little weird, um, I was talking to my team leader um, who um, we were talking about, you know, basically about sports massage and he was getting things on his headphones. People were coming up to him while we were chatting that something was wrong. At that exact same time I had a student come up to me, actually Michaela, who was having like chest pains. She was not feeling well. She was, um, me, I thought she was having an anxiety attack. It's not unlike that students would you know, get a little anxious in this environment, but she did not feel well. I went upstairs by myself. Um, there was no one around, but I noticed people kind of talking on walkies, I think I remember, because um, I heard someone say, the roads are clear. And I went to the door and there was a sign that said, once you leave, you can't enter. And I think I remember seeing someone try and open the door from the outside. Um, but they couldn't get in, so I was like, so I knew then I couldn't go outside or else I'd be separated from the group. Um, and I happened to get a text message uh, right before my phone died asking if I was okay from one of my friends. Um, and I had no idea what she was talking about. And then the last text message right before my phone died was uh, I heard about the bombs on the news or something like that. And um, so I still wasn't sure. I, for all I knew, it was like fireworks gone bad with kids playing around. Um, I started walking downstairs to, and there was a staff person there and I asked what was going on and he said that um, bombs just went off. And so I immediately went back to the group. We really thought it was a joke that there was fireworks or something silly going on at the finish line. And he said, you know, this isn't, this is not a joke. There's, you know, a bomb, a bomb just went off. We think people are injured. Um, this area is not safe. We need to get everybody out of here immediately. Um, 
I felt totally panicked at that point because I there were a lot of people in there. We had a lot of runners in there. We're in the middle of triaging. We're in the middle of taking care of, of, of runners and now I had to tell everyone to pack up which is quite the task because there's tables and all of our equipment and our supplies and everything. Um, students started feeling panicked so we were just, me and my other faculty were just trying to stay, tell everyone we're going to stay calm, we're packing up and we're just going to get out of here. Communication got a little bit crazy. Um, when we're in the John Hancock medical tent there's no um, service so none of our phones were working that's why nobody knew what was going on. We didn't have a TV, we're not watching the race. We're actually kind of separate because we really have to concentrate on what we're doing. When we hit the street all of a sudden everybody's phones were going crazy with there's a bomb, are you okay? You know tons. I, got, I must have got a hundred texts from the college, from my family, from um, all sorts of people that were just had just found out on the news but we didn't know we didn't really know yet for me I think I had a little bit um, more calm perspective on it because my phone died um, in all honesty because everyone's getting texts are you alive are you okay what's going on everyone's getting these text messages not sure what's going on or they're contacting people freaking out that they don't know where me, in my head, I'm not getting all these texts, I'm not texting anyone, my phone's dead. So I'm focusing on what's going on. And so I, um, I actually felt calm and not stressing as much. I mean, I remember having fears in my head but not showing them. Like, I was pretty um, put together, I guess. I was trying to get communication out to um, people that were trying to reach us. We finally posted something on Facebook, which I think got, went through, so it really helped yeah. a lot. Anyone that was friends with us on Facebook, the clinic, got to knew, knew that we were okay. Everybody needed some type of, I think, professional um, assistance, so the college set up um, the, a, counsel, a counselor to be here on campus. We gave them time off, indefinite time off. Um, a lot of them were injured, muscular wise from their backs their necks from trying to you know run with their stuff I you know I was really worried about what would happen this year like I really like to bring a big group and make a big statement and but I totally understood that you know maybe students were not gonna want to participate and or even the new students would be afraid um, but we actually have a group of 28 people going so we actually have we actually have the, a big group from the last year's group added on to this year's group. In my mind, um, you can't you can't be scared to go back. Like um, for me, that's showing defeat. And so for me, I need to get back there. So I'm not afraid. I may be afraid going into it, but I know I have a good feeling this year is going to be great. So. Um, I just need to face it. Really. I wasn't really concerned so much. Um, I don't really know why. I just felt like this year would have been safer and I trusted the people that we were going with and I trusted the security that I would have had there. Um, I was excited about having the opportunity to go so I just I don't know, I just went full force. So this year, different than obviously from after what happened last year, um, we had a completely different preparation for the race. Um, we spent a lot more time with the college uh, with doing actual off-campus preparedness plan. Um, God forbid we needed to be evacuated again or there was an emergency. We just felt with the amount of students that we had off campus that we just really needed to have some type of a written plan as to what we would do if there was a problem. I felt very prepared for it. We, there was like a map in our bag of um, the area surrounding us and where we could go. Um, and we had, you know, all of our contact information was out there for everybody, like on our IDs. We had like in case of emergency contact. Um, and I feel like we all kind of talked about, you know, what we would do kind of in a sense. Um, and so I, the only really way I prepared was just, I just tried to be calm about the whole thing. They spoke right at the beginning. It was unbelievably emotional. Um, the man that got up that was the our leader, um, 
that was the one that you know we were in contact with to evacuate last year broke down and that really you know made everyone else break down it was a very emotional but I think in a good emotional minute we all got it out and then we were all like okay now it's time to do our job they were all very open about everything in their life where they worked if their family was there if they had friends there with them if they were there last year which a lot of them were um, and nobody really spoke negatively about last year they all just said they were here this year to celebrate you know just I guess that they made it and they, they did it and um, you know there was one guy I had he ran 106 marathons in his life he did the Boston Marathon 26 years in a row and I took a picture with him because it was just like that was really awesome and he had his whole family there and um, everyone was just like thrilled to be there and they had all said that this is one of the best marathons for them to run so you know I, you kind of feel honored to be there amongst that kind of crowd. Everyone's dying to tell their story about last year, where they were, how they finally found their families, um, how scared everybody was, um, and the students that you know had been there before obviously were very moved by it. But all even the new students, you know, just the end of the day, they were crying. The students were crying, and they're saying this was the most unbelievable experience we could have ever, ever um, been a part of. And no regrets because, I don't know, it's kind of like a lifetime opportunity to be a volunteer there, especially after last year. It felt really good to be a part of it. And um, yeah, I would definitely want to do it again. On this month's edition of Student to Student, our interns put the spotlight on BCC's diversity by documenting the activities at the International Day festivities held last month. This is Student to Student here at Bristol Community College's Fall River Campus. The International Festival provides students with an opportunity to learn about the different cultures of their fellow classmates. The festival is hosted each year by the International Club and offers a wide variety of ethnically diverse activities such as body painting and a fashion show. We have close to 50 different countries uh, represented here at Bristol Community College and this is an opportunity um, that students, faculty and staff have to showcase their cultural background um, and, and just be proud of it. Okay, Uh, it's a festival that we do here in BCC to celebrate like the different cultures and diversity and to show people uh, that doesn't know anything about um, cultures and country to show them a little bit of our traditions. Most of the stuff from Cambodia, what you have here is mostly the temple called Angkor Wat, the Asian jello foods. We can say like Dominican are like the best player, the best baseball player like internationally. Right here we got the, the tambora, guira, and accordion. Like we use that like um, to play music like um, merengue. To get involved with the International Club, you can contact Livia Newbert at 508-678-2811, extension 2476, or ask for more information at the Student Engagement Center here at Fall River. For Around BCC, I'm Evan Riggs. During the break earlier in the show, we showed you highlights of the annual student juried art and design exhibit at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery. The month of May is filled with events celebrating student success, and it all culminates on Saturday, May 31st at 11 a.m. with the annual Bristol Community College commencement exercises held at the Fall River Campus. We hope to see you there. This is the final edition of Around BCC for this academic year. We appreciate your continued support of the program and of your community college. I'm Keith Thibault. Have a great summer, and we'll see you again in September.